Welcome to the Synaptics booth. Um, I'm Paulina de la Garza. I work in the audio team. I'm going to present to you what is Resonate. Resonate is a new innovative technology, which is um, basically we're using the display as a transducer to generate some sound. Um, basically the display is becoming the speaker. This works because we have two uh, PSO amplifiers to PSO transducers that are um, attached to the display and they are being driven by Synaptic's latest PSO um, amplifier. Uh, we target to generate equal loudness or even more loudness than traditional dynamic speakers. And well, some of the benefits as well is that since we're removing the speaker, um, the speakers and also the LRA actuators for haptics, we can even have a slimmer uh, mechanical design. We can. This is naturally dustproof and waterproof since we are removing the the holes of the speakers. Um, another good thing is that we can have some improved haptics and also we have force f uh, force feedback. Um, um, capabilities and so this is uh, you making the, the sound coming from the display yes vibrating. exactly and you can have an even more immersive sound since it's coming from the front and not from the sides as traditional uh, systems yes of course go ahead okay you can come closer yeah. yep. all right all right yep it's cool it's not a uh, copyrighted music right no <laughs> oh, hopefully not. It's like a demo sound? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's uh, how's the quality of the sound compared to built-in speakers? So actually the sound is uh, comparable uh, to the dyna traditional dynamic speakers. We're targeting to have like the equal loudness. Um, we can even have a, a little bit uh, louder um, even. Um, and also, I mean, this is really cool for when you're having um, uh, where you're playing a game, you know, in your tablet, on your phone, you can be more immersed into it. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Okay. You can introduce your colleague there. Yes, let's of course. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Right. Right. All right. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, please introduce yourself. I'm Sam Toba, um, Product Marketing Manager for the Touch Products at Synaptics. Thanks for stopping so by. So what do we see here? So we have, uh, touch. Yes, we have uh, touch controllers on OLED products. And what we do is we sense the finger touch. Can you hold it in your hand, this one? Yeah, yeah. no, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. like this. Like Just so I get a better signal. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so what do you say? So we, we sense touch on OLED panels. So we have different types of OLED panels yeah. that we support. We have rigid OLED, we have flex OLED, we have foldables, which are becoming very, very popular as well. And then the most recently, we're supporting LTPO types of panels with touch. Uh, what's the LTPO? LTPO is the latest technology of uh, the display where it saves power. It can go down to refresh rates as slow as 1 hertz, all the way up to 144 hertz. So they have variable refresh. It, ha it has a difficulty for controllers. It's technically challenging, and we support touch on that. How do you manage? to make it work? We do tune for the different uh, refresh rates on the panel. So we tune that in advance. All right. And how do you make it work on the flexible? Flexible panels have special challenges because they're thin. They're very, very noisy. Um, we have high sensitivity of the touch, and we're able to sense through the, the, the very, very high noise on these panels. Noise. How does the noise on panels? Uh, display noise on OLED panels is a very, very challenging problem because OLED is very, very thin and the touch sensor is very, very close to the display. It makes it very, very challenging noise-wise to distinguish the finger touch signal from the, the noise in the background. All right. Cool. Uh, are you a market leader yes. in doing this solution? Yes, absolutely, yes. So we work with the all the display, the almost, almost all the phones or all the OEMs will use us. All the display all manufacturers will use us. You don't have any competition? We have, of course, lots of competition. It's a tough market, but uh, our customers like us, and uh, they've designed us into many, many phones, thankfully. And the solution here is just a tiny little chip somewhere on the PCB? Yes, the solution here... Or do you here, go directly in the main SSC? No, the, 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 the chip is connected to the, the display panel on the little flex that's uh, hanging off this and folded in the back. So we connect to the touch sensor on the display panel. 
Is it amazing what happens every year here at the display week uh, with the, the latest new displays and oh, yeah. we're just going to be ready and yeah. working with them for each? Every, each every year there's something new coming and the panels for us are getting thinner and thinner. It makes it very, very challenging. Uh, how good is a uh, functionality? Good question. Um, we support uh, touch under difficult conditions such as thin panels, moisture, charger noise, car cradles, um, all sorts of conditions that our uh, customers throw at us. We make sure it works under any condition. I remember how it was a little bit like 15 years ago and there was a resistive or something like that. Yes. And then capacitive came on. That's right. And yeah. that was pretty cool when somebody figured that out. Mm -hmm. Was it mm -hmm. Synaptics that figured it out originally? We, we were one of the that first. That convinced the Apple guys to do it? We were one of the first to support uh, touch sensing uh, capacitively where we like to consider ourselves a, a pioneer in this area. So Steve Jobs was waiting for you to get it ready to launch on a phone, <laughs> iPhone? Is that right? Like you were the, 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 the core tech that was missing to for Apple to decide to join the We actually market. had a touch controller on a clear pad prior to iPhone. All right, so there yeah. was something happening, but it also had to be in a mass production. Sure, right? yes. And it had to be super smooth. Yes. The display maker together with the That's right. touch. Back then, it was a sensor maker that we worked with. All right, yeah. cool. You were there all this time? No, uh, I've been here uh, since 2013, yes. All right, cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. This I worked on that. It's on? Okay. Uh, so my name is Vishal Shah and I run the product marketing for our display driver uh, product line for Synaptics. And uh, what do we see here? So so here we are showcasing our um, uh, display for VR products. Yeah. Um, and, and this particular demo is showcasing our IP for which we call local dimming IP which provides a OLED like performance with very high contrast on LCD screen. So um, that's, that's, that's this demo is showcasing that because we are, uh, the displays are very close to your eyes and, and high contrast ratio is really, really important for that. And, um, and, and uh, in, in, in VR application, uh, OLED is not a good technology, LCD is, and that's where local dimming is a very important piece of the uh, IP uh, that, that we provide to our customers. So you enable uh, local dimming, which is uh, kind of like also they call it mini LED. Mini LED, mini LED so behind mini the LED screen. behind the screen. So you, you you turn off some of the, the 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 LEDs where the black is true black, right? So you have to turn off the LED behind the display, and and that's where you can you can get a very high contrast ratio OLED like display. Uh, true black is black, and then uh, uh, which one is yours? Both. both Stars uh, show on and off performance. So this is on right now, but see with off you can start seeing the uh, the gray effect versus this is black, true black versus this is if you disable local dimming, it looks gray. So this is turning on and off uh, local dimming and you can see it's very deep dark black when the local dimming is on. So that's what that's what we provide. Um, and rest of the, uh, the uh, Sets here are showcasing our end products uh, that customers customers end product Meta Quest Pro, Meta Quest 2, uh, and this is the Pico Neo 4. So these are some of the finished finished products in the market you can buy today using Synaptics display driver. By going the LCD with Mini LED route, uh, people can get more brightness. Uh, absolutely, you can and enable cost, the brightness, maybe? better contrast. Com better contrast, better, very very high contrast with local dimming and of course cost is very important piece. We provide benefit of using low number of zones uh, compared to uh, very high number of zones that, that you have to use if you don't have the IP. So, All right. so that, that's cool. a key value proposition. Nice. And, and, and pretty much entire, entire, entire portfolio of VR devices in the market uses Synaptics. It's, uh, we, are, we have more than 50% market share in the VR market today. 80%? 90, more than 90%. 90? Yes. Right. Uh, you can see uh, everything, uh, more than 40, 40 models in the 
market using Synaptix products. 4K plus resolution VR, 120 hertz, all this is possible because it's an LCD. Because LCD and we have a product with micro OLED as well, uh, uh, which will be out in the market later this year, which uses micro OLED. So we provide display driver for both LCD and micro OLED. The, the micro OLED, um, how, how is it basically? Direct mini LED. It's, it's so, like yeah, it's, it's an much OLED like going directly to the display. Mm, correct, like correct, backlight. correct. So, so micro OLED requires a very high. It's, uh, if you need very high PPI, very very high resolution, LCD has a certain limitation. So LCD can go maybe 2,000 PPI, while micro OLED can go 3,000 to 4,000 PPI, which is required for the VR kind of uh, application. Uh, and and VR it's board. micro OLED or LED. Micro OLED, micro OLED, OLED. because uh, micro LED also can work, but micro OLED is today it's more mature technology compared to micro LED, micro LED development. So, so it's a display. Basically. OLED micro, correct, correct. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. John Brady, I do automotive marketing here at Synaptics. I want to show you a couple of our latest technologies. Why don't we um, take a look at this one first? So, in local dimming, I'm not sure if your uh, viewers are familiar with local dimming. So, generally in a in an LCD, we have edge lighting that goes around the edges of it, and you can see it up here. See the edge light, and then that illuminates the whole panel. What that means is you get a lot of halo on it. And sorry, it's going to rotate around. In this particular one, it has a matrix backlight. So the LEDs are on in a matrix behind the display. It's gonna come up uh, right here. That's the one on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, sorry. And you can get a much better contrast ratio. So what I'm gonna sh show in this demo here, this is a simulation of edge lit LEDs. They're all on, and you can see what the contrast ratio is. Now I'll turn on the local dimming. So it's dark where it's dark. All these LEDs go off, and they're only on in this particular area. And we can do a nice comparison here, half and half. So there you can see there's a pretty major difference that you're getting. Hopefully it come out on there. And you can see in an automotive, another automotive image, this will be on and off and a half and half display. Give you an idea of the, this is something that's many, many vehicles are going to have this starting maybe this year, one or two, and they're going to start seeing it a lot more, 25 and 26. And uh, the, that's a contrast ratio to compare with OLEDs. OLEDs obviously have excellent contrast ratio. LCDs are just trying to approximate it in a more cost-effective way. Uh, is there a crazy high brightness you can achieve? Because um, when you drive a car, you want to have safety and you want to make sure people see the screen. That's, a, that's an excellent um, question. So the, t the two major things when you compare it to an OLED is the contrast ratio is going to be like an OLED, but not as good. The brightness, however, uh, OLEDs generally 1,000 nits maximum, but more like 600 for running over the lifetime. This, in this type of panel, you can get, you can achieve 5,000 nits. So you have the whole the whole glass roof, the sunlight coming in, it's being reflected off the panel. You can turn it up. 2,000 nits would be like a, a very high brightness, but 5,000 is achievable as well. Nice, cool. And so, and what do you see here? In the, in the, uh, can you, on the other side. Cool. So right here, this is from a Lucid Air. Uh, Lucid is the company, Air is the vehicle. So it's one of the newer EVs out there on the market. This has TDDI in it. TDDI means it has a touch and a display driver together, and the touch sensor's inside the panel. Some things that are special about this one is this is called a freeform display. So you can see it's, no, it's not a rectangular or uh, a rectilinear shape. It's actually curved down here. And so we have to uh, do special adjustments for the display as well as the touch to work, work well at the edges. Something else you can see if you look at the edge here, this is also curved on top of it. So this is a, a, almost a two, two meter curve and this is tighter over on this side, 800 mill millimeters. So we have to design our chips so that they're able to bend without, without breaking. Nice. Uh, so so this is actually in a in a car, ma in a, on the market. Yeah, it's a mass production. They started uh, ramping last year, and so you people that have pre-ordered them have 
It's tens of thousands of these uh, cars have already shipped. I was just over at Lucid there in the uh, Bay Area, California. This is just talking about the, um, our latest chip. This is the Smart Bridge, which does the local dimming. In this case, it's driving two displays off of one chip. It's something called uh, MST, which is part of the EDP spec. And this is just showing the overall of the chip. The chip can drive up to 4,000 zones. The one I showed you earlier was 384 zones. This is capable of driving 4,000 zones, 30 inch 6K displays. All right. So it's just a, a corner here showing the future That's right. of automotive. What's going to be coming in, in cars very soon. All right. And all your partners who are making the displays are ramping up mini LED. Definitely. That you can Talk using your. Maybe 8, 10 different uh, display manufacturers capable, of, as well as tier ones. And OEMs are specking local dimming into their, their vehicles right now. Here at the Display Week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.